you probably click on this video because you're interested in fine-tuning your own AI models, because you realize that AI is indeed the engine in the car on the road to success, and you want to sit in that car and drive to the sunset, whizzing by your competitors, making lots of money, and yes, capitalism. And in the spirit of capitalism, in this video, we're going to create a product recommendation model based on AI that recommends a product based on what our e-commerce store client has added to the shopping cart, right? And by the end of this video, we're going to have a beautiful model and it's going to be awesome. And we're going to look like, just like this scientist here tinkering with this massive machine with receding hairline and three arms and deformed fingers and jelly beans dancing in the background. Okay, so here's what's up, right? Okay, this is our database of examples that I have generated uh, yesterday. Right, and I have generated it by hand by just kind of making up some shopping cart combinations. Some are some make sense, some make absolutely zero sense, like snorkel, throw blanket, and stapler. And then I have made some suggested items and reasoning for this. Okay, so I made a handful on my own, like 10 ish. And then I went to chat GPT and I basically said, Hey, just make more examples like this. And it worked. Now I have over 100 in here. So the first question is if a powerful general intelligence like ChatGPT4 can create all these models on its own, like all these examples on its own, why would we even use fine-tuning? And the answer to that is speed and cost. In particular, what we're going to try to achieve in this video is we're going to try to create a model <clears throat> that has the same quality of output as GPT-4, but that model is going to be based on ADA which is a model that's a thousand times cheaper than GPT-4, 100 times faster. In fact, in fact, it's like instantly generates the output, but it's dumb as a bag of rocks. Like, I mean, check this. Hey, Ada, what's one plus one? One is addition, <laughs> one is equal to five, right? Beautiful, awesome. So we're going to use this dumb model and try to make it so that it outputs the same quality of completions as GPT-4. Can we do it? Well, you should join me on this journey. Right below this video, there's a sign-up link for EntryPoint, which we'll be using for this project to create a fine tuned model without writing a single line of code. Sign up for free, and then you're also going to get a link to this database. Just join me on this database, and uh, yeah, call this video, create that account, and then meet me back here. Three, two, one. Welcome back. Okay, now let's continue. So here's what's going to happen. We're going to download this as CSV. There we go. Then we're going to go to entry point. Now if you sign up and create an organization, then this is what you should see. So click plus, we're going to name our project. Let's go store clerk or something, okay? This is a generator type of project. You also have classifier type of project. Same thing, just the layout is slightly different on how you create them. Initial setup blank project is completely fine. Let's just create this, okay? Now, let's import some data. And we're going to import that CSV that we have just downloaded. There we go. Now, we have, well, three columns got imported. And so, for the first column, which is our shopping cart column, right? Okay, so we want this to be the prompt. We want this to be the thing that we give to the AI and we want to get the completions. We want to get two completions, which is the suggested item, and we want the reasoning. Why AI has picked that particular item. Okay, so that's how we select them. Prompt, completion, completion. Continue. Now, we can dedicate some of the examples for validation. And validation is basically just a bunch of examples that get sent to OpenAI or whatever platform you're using. Um, and it will automatically rate the health of the model, right? How accurate is it basically, right? So I'm going to go with zero for now. And let's just start. Okay, so the import has started. We're going to wait a few seconds in multiple examples. Shouldn't take long. There we go. 100 examples, right? And there we go. We have all that we have in here now in the examples. In the example, uh, like what, what do we call them? Like pellets or uh, panels. Yeah, panels. We have the prompt and we have the completion. Now, I don't like how this looks right here, right? Because we have suggested an item at the end and we have reasoning right here. So I'm going to go under template 
Okay. And here I can kind of change uh, the, the, the formats, right? I could add something here for the shopping cart variable, essentially, and I can change the variables around here, right? What I'm going to do, I just want the AI to give me like a suggested item right here, and I want the reasoning to kind of be in the new line uh, right here, okay? Just like that. Now I'm going to save it, and all the examples that I have are going to be, you know, applied through this template. Let's see. There we go. Completion and the reason. Perfect. Okay. Now I have 100 examples. I can probably start a fine tune with this, but let's say, let's imagine that you have made these examples by hand and you only have like 10 or 20. What you can do, you could go under synthesis. And okay, so before you would have to do this, you would have to go under integrations, open AI, just paste your API key in here, right? Because everything that we're doing in entry point, it's not like we're burning any tokens on our end. It's like we're basically the glue between your platform and whatever you want to do, right? We're just, we're just a platform, okay? So you can go on the synthesis and you can, so at, in the beginning, I told you that I've used ChatGPT to generate a bunch more examples based on what I have, based on the examples that I have basically provided it, right? It's a few shot learning training. Synthesis does the same thing. So, I mean, there you go, right? You can just create 20 examples, then go to synthesis, create a thousand more if you want to right so this is now creating five examples it's gonna take a while there we go this is now done and now i have a bunch of prompts that the ai generated based on the prompts that i have in the examples and i have a bunch of completions you know using kind of the same kind of this underlying logic and now i can just scroll through this and whenever i like something i can just go whoa add and i can kind of tweak it and then just save to like training right seven close seven close uh, seven clouds, like whatever, right? Uh, and there we go. Now, this is how we can synthetically create more examples for our fine tuned models. Because, well, the more examples that we have, the higher the quality of the model that we will create. Rule of thumb every time your data set doubles, the quality of the model doubles as well. Okay. Now, this, now, once this is done, once you have all the examples ready in the correct format that you want, you basically generated a bunch more here with synthesis, then you can go under fine tunes and click plus. Now here you can select your AI model or the platform that you want to use. In my case, it's open AI because I have just, I have just that one integration. And then you can create, you can select your base model, right? You have DaVinci, Curie, Babbage, and Ada. Now Ada is the one that's dumb as rocks and uh, DaVinci is the most powerful one. It's also quite expensive especially the find and model, right? It's it's really quite expensive, like six times as much as GPT 3.5. But let that not stop us because the thing is, and maybe perhaps the whole reason why we're fine tuning is because we want our prompts to be very, very short, right? Because we, if you want to create completions with prompting, then you have to this, create this elaborate prompt like, hey, no, a class, blah, blah, blah. And here are some examples and here are guidelines, right? right? It gets really really long so even though non-fine-tuned models might be i mean cheaper or kind of comparable in price they burn a lot more tokens right like on average thousand tokens let's say while a fine-tuned model you just give it the variable and it's going and it's going to create the com correct completion right so it's maybe 20 times fewer tokens right and which is significantly reduces the cost okay so that was a bit of a tangent okay let's go back here and yeah, let's select our model, Curie, let's say um, it's going to cost 15 cents to train this, right? And entry point estimates this because, you know, we have the number of examples that will be in the training data set and we have the number of tokens, so we can calculate this, okay? Uh, of course, if you go to the VG, it's going to be slightly more expensive. And yeah, the way you start the fine tune, just pick one, Curie, whatever. You can also change the number of epochs and other stuff. Not really that important right now, but yeah, press start. And your fine tune is going to, you know, get prepared, get sent it to OpenAI, and then just fine tuned on their end. It's going to take about an hour, maybe two hours. Uh, the, also, depending on the size of your uh, of your data set, it's going to get name, colorful animal, right? And yeah, now I simply have to wait. So I cheated a bit, and I have already created a bunch of fine tunes, which I'm going to show you now. There we go. Same example set. And this is how it is going to look like. I have just fine tuned like four... Uh, four models. One is Ada, Babbage, Curie, and Da Vinci on the same example set. And they're done right here. Okay. And once this is done, you can then open them up in 
Let's go with Ada. Yeah. You can open them up right in the playground. Right. And now, okay, let's let's come up with some items for the shopping cart, like a weasel, a bucket, and a bowling ball. Okay. We also have to add the stop sequence, like three uh, hashtags also in here, because if we don't add this, we just kind of run it. It's going to go, woo, and that we don't really want that, right? We want it to stop. So just like that. So a bit, there we go. Food ads. I'm not sure what food ads are. Food ads, foods ads, blah, blah, blah. what food ads are, but hey, okay. We can also lower the temperature a bit to have more consistent output. Cleaning brush, okay. So, the customer has items for cleaning, outdoor sports, and socializing. A cleaning brush would be useful for cleaning up after bowling balls and other outdoor activities, such as cleaning up after a party. Well, okay. So, the logic and reasoning of Ada is still not on point. But hey, it's much smarter than what it was, right? So, that's good. Maybe we can try another model. Maybe Da Vinci. Da Vinci is kind of smarter. Uh, let's take the same ones. Three hashtags. Bowling shows. Okay. Well, that's better. The customer is interested in sports and has items for cleaning and bowling. Bowling shows will be helpful for improving their game and enhancing their OLR bowling experience. Sure. Right? That's much more reasonable. So, okay. So, our fine-tuned model on 100 examples kind of works, right? Smarter than what it was before. But still, it's not where we want it to be. But that's okay because we only use 100 examples. So, what's the next step? This was fine-tuning version 1.0. We want to create another version based on the same fine-tune that we have just created. So we go under playground, right? Because now what we want to do is we want to generate a random prompt, which is what we're going to do with GPT 3.5 in this case. And we're going to select our fine-tune. I'm just going to pick DaVinci. Uh, let's set temperature to something that's kind of slightly more random. And we set the number of completions. And now... DaVinci is going to give us three completions, and we're going to pick the one that we like the most and save it back to the data set, right? And that's an extremely efficient way how you can fine tune the AI model, right? By always picking the best output that you wanted to, to, you know, to create. That's a ter terrific way for fine tuning your AI models, the quality of them, right? Increasing the quality for data set, there we go. Okay, so here's what we get. The generated one at the bottom is what we would otherwise generate with GPT 3.5 and the three ones right here so we can see ivory yellow jacket right are the ones that we have generated with our fine tune model based on the same prompt right and we can see that there's some difference yeah there's some difference now these ones are different because the temperature is higher which is kind of increases the randomness of stuff uh, which is fine exactly what we want in this case uh, and then we can just pick the one that we like the most the best product that we like and the best uh, reasoning that we kind of like from the AI, I don't know, like this one. Uh, maybe we can tweak it and then save to examples and then just generate some more prompts, generate more fine tunes, and that's what we do. And that's how you create a a, a, a model, an AI-based model. That, that's really all there is to it. And the beauty of this is that anyone from your team who has five minutes of time, even an intern can just hop on this. Doesn't matter how tech savvy they are, they can just, you know, Contribute to fine-tuning the AI models for your company, right? Yeah, so we have generated a different prompt and we got a bunch of different completions and so we can continue this process like whatever, right? And then once this is done, let's let's just save a bunch because uh, I just want to show you something. Whoopsies, there we go. Then we can go back to fine-tunes, click plus, and we're going to select, okay, so same platform. Now we have new fine tunes in here, new models, right? We can pick, I don't know, whichever. And so check here, like the, we're not going to use the same examples that we've used to get the model, right? We are only going to use the new ones, the unique ones. Either the ones that we have added, or if we have changed any of the old ones, right? Like edited or fixed or whatever, right? And we can then just start this again. And, you know, we're going to create a new fine-tuned model based on our previous fine-tuned model. And so on the cycle goes, right? So that's it. That's how you can fine-tune your own models with entry point. And I mean, yeah, sure. I mean, how you would use them, then you just basically uh, integrate the OpenAI's API, 
take the name of the model, plug it in your product, and you basically have the thing working on, on your end, right? And again, you're only using your own tokens. Uh, we're not charging for any token use or whatever, just that's pretty much it, right? We're just the glue, again, between you and the platform that you want to use. So that's it. Uh, let's see if I have forgotten anything. So this is the workflow, create an example by hand, use GPT 3.5 or 4 to create a bunch more examples. And you know, that's how basically it goes, right? Okay, so if you want to try out Entry Point for free, there's a link below this video. If it's not in the description box, then it's in the pinned comments. Sign up for free. Um, you can get access to this data set as well. It's going to be right below the sign up link. And if you want to, well, discuss the, pro the, the, the platform, if you have any more questions, then you can either join our Discord, send me a message, send Mark a message. Uh, it's miha at entrypointai.com, or you can even just schedule a call. There's also going to be a candy link in the same comment box. So that's it. Uh, yeah, hope you like this and I uh, hope you can create some really awesome fine-tuned models. Of course, what we did here is just like an example. You can create whatever your wild imagination comes up with, right? So that's it. Uh, yeah, talk soon. Bye.